This is a quick overview of a, or tutorial if you will, of how to use the Open API spec client generator uh, for Conjure. This is specific to Conjure Enterprise. So if you go to the uh, Open API spec directory, which is here in the CyberArk repo in GitHub, this is a comprehensive implementation of the Open API spec. Uh, to generate client libraries for Conjure. It works with Conjure Open Source as well as Conjure Enterprise. Uh, there are examples that are generated for Conjure Open Source. This tutorial is specific to Conjure Enterprise and it's specific to Python. So this Python is just one of the many languages supported by the Open API spec. Um, if we look at a uh, just what is the Open API spec, it's kind of the next generation of Swagger. Uh, and if you've worked with REST APIs or uh, any any sort of uh, programmatic interfaces, then uh, you'll know where Swagger fits. So so Open API kind of supersedes uh, Swagger and uh, provides uh, a framework uh, for um, creating APIs. So the benefit to Conjure customers is that if the uh, Conjure R and D has not created, if product management has not created a client library for your favorite language, you can generate one. Uh, and so uh, that's uh, that's huge because while it's it's relatively easy to create your own uh, wrappers for REST APIs in the language of your choice, uh, why do that if you don't have to? So this is also this ensures some degree of consistency between languages, so that uh, the conventions used and the uh, the API endpoint naming and things like that are consistent from language to language. Uh, so that if you happen to use multiple languages in your environment, then this will ensure that consistency as well. Um, so uh, this also supports, and I can't speak to this with any degree of authority, So, um, but uh, API gateways also, uh, in many cases, um, can support or, or host API endpoints. And so the client libraries that are generated here can be hosted in an API gateway uh, and then be forwarded or forward those calls on to uh, a, a back end um, so that you can uh, you can uh, insulate uh, applications from uh, calling the, uh, the the conjure endpoints directly. So the benefits of CyberArk, I won't go into these in as much detail, uh, but it just means that uh, we are going to be using this to generate uh, standard issue client libraries. Uh, it's again going to ensure that consistency across language implementations. So for those that we decide to generate, and I believe the Java just SDK has already been generated from the Open API, API spec. Uh, so uh, look for more uh, Conjure generated and or, or CyberArk generated and supported uh, APIs from uh, for Conjure that that use this this spec. So with that, let's look at this particular tutorial. Um, it is in the directory in Conjure Demos now. So Conjure Demos uh, in a public directory called Conjure Int for Enterprise Open API Python Demo. Um, I won't read the readme to you here. You're free to do that. But um, the idea here is that you should first clone this spec or, or just otherwise reproduce this spec in your own environment. Uh, and so here... This is in my environment, Conjure Open API Spec Main. I, I literally just took the zip file and downloaded it. If you take the zip file, it adds the, the main, the branch that, that you've pulled down. So that's in there. You can see that that's got, got all of, of the stuff that we we're looking at over here. Um, you don't need to do anything in that library or in that directory. So you can stay in your demo directory. Um, what you will need to do, though, is edit the uh, config script and you will also need a conjure uh, enterprise leader node so that's here this is in my environment uh, i'm actually running this in my uh, in a minikube vm but wherever you run a conjure uh, cluster you'll need at least that conjure leader node as well as the uh, an admin users uh, username and password and that all goes into this config script here so uh, the path to the conjure open api spec uh, main the Conjure account that you have, mine's called dev. Conjure host name, mine's called Conjure 
master mini cube. The IP address and that in my environment is 192.168. Uh, what is that? Uh, hang on a sec. Cat Etsy hosts. Uh, this number here. So that's my IP address. And this is basically just so that um, these environment variables will get used for the configuration in the application path to the cert file. Uh, that is ls under Etsy Roger Master Minicube Dev. So that is my cert for the the server cert. So I'm going to add that here. Admin username is admin. And now I use keyring so that I don't have to expose this keyring get uh, conjure admin pwd. So this just keeps me from getting in trouble with our IT sec department um, when I check in, even though it's a demo password. Um, we try and model good behavior here. So that is the configuration for the, for this environment. Now there's, you can see these number scripts are numbers. So that I don't actually run this script. There's nothing, if I ran it, it would just create those environment variables. It's sourced by these other two scripts. So when I run the one script, what it's going to do is use the path to the open API spec to first generate the Python client library in the local directory. If you don't have uh, the right, uh, so this assumes there's a Docker environment that it has access to. It's going to uh, create a, uh, it'll download the image of that, that it needs. Um, it will uh, mount that, uh, that directory, generate the library. Now you can see we've generated the client library. Now we've initialized, actually we just finished the, the demo. Can't even talk to it fast enough. Um, we finished the setup. So, so this generated the client library called PyClient in the local directory. It then, in uh, the, the test container, loaded that client library as part of the Python environment and then ran that Python script, which um, authenticated as the admin user, rotated a user's loaded a policy to create an, an, uh, another user, rotated that user's API key, um, did these, these various uh, things in that, that library. So that application is actually in this directory here. Python app is the Python application that is uh, loading these directories. This, this is really what the demo is all about because generating that API spec, that's all, that's all great, but it's really how do you use that? And so that's what this, uh, the number two script does is run that Python application in the test container. We do a, a, a Docker ps grep for python here and we should see our, our python uh, pytest uh, container here so it creates a container called pytest that is your test environment it's a python test environment for running this app now this this is mounted directly so you can simply edit that uh, that python app here and start to experiment with it so that's the whole idea is to give you an environment where you can start playing around with these endpoints. If you need to see uh, the uh, documentation, the best thing to do is to check that in. If I go over to my uh, my app, my environment, in, in my my repo um, here, and go to my my Python test. So this is named a little differently in my environment. So this is where I was. That this I think actually has the client here, and if you go into the doc, so this is the generated client. I, this is not part of the uh, Conjure Demos directory, just to keep it lean here. So, but if you were to, to check in your generated client, um, the docs are actually mark, written in Markdown. And so you kind of need that, they're, they're, the formatting here is hard to read unless it's being interpreted. Um, and so, but it's actually very comprehensive. So this is the Conjure Authentication API 
this is the first thing that we do. So the general pattern is you create an instance of the API from your client. Your client is the thing that holds all of the configuration information. Um, and so, uh, so this will get you started in how to use the documentation that's actually generated for your language. Uh, and so you can generate a client library for your language as well as the documentation, but that documentation isn't really useful until you check that generated library into a repo, or maybe you have some app that can interpret Markdown that you can use to, to, for the documentation. So that was one thing I found that until I actually checked this into a repo, um, I couldn't use the documentation very effectively. Um, but the documentation includes uh, code samples, and so this uh, example application is largely constructed by I largely I constructed it largely by cutting and pasting from the documentation. Um, so that's a quick overview of uh, this, uh, the Contra Enterprise Open API Python demo. Um, hopefully this gets you started uh, using this. You can start with Python, um, but then of course if, you know, if there's another language that you prefer, I think you could probably use the same approach to create a, uh, a test environment. We're starting to experiment with that. So have fun with that and uh, happy development.